<laughs> so you got your guitar with you. I have, I. Just tell us, a first of all, about this guitar, because it looks beautiful. Well, before I do, I'm going to show you something. What do you think that is? That's a windmill that cares. <laughs> it's Auntie Pete Townsend. He, he does it. Well, it's reckless, but the nice is the new nasty, so that's a windmill that cares. Okay. <laughs> it's a Farley's Ruskin rock and roll. <laughs> this is a, an old 1960 body. It's a Frankenstein guitar, and there's a young lad in Newcastle called Alex Kirtley, and he's made the neck for us. And he looks like James Stewart did in 1949, this guy. He's crazy. He looks like an old antique stealer. He's only 24. <laughs> So he did this, and so it's a very old-fashioned. It's just got a little P90 it's beautiful. Ball, it's like an old blues guitar. I do yeah. love it. And I've, I don't even know if it works yet, Bob. Well, give it a try. Let's see if it does. <laughs> I'll do something I thought, think Bob might like. Oh, it's, it's in tune as well. I'll just play a little bit of Carter family stuff. Okay. excited there. That was a magic mushroom chord. You get them on the golf course. You know this tune, eh? Really. Janice and Toby. She got there off of Chet Atkins. He was our neighbour. There's a bad moon in the tent. I'll get me caught. Because <laughs> there's a thing with, in Nashville with the uh, guitarists who tune. You know, sometimes you're standing there, aren't you? And there's an artist on stage and they're en endlessly tuning their guitar. And in Nashville, they say, we tune because we care. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I played you so much in the early 90s, Martin, didn't I? And, uh, you know, I love your music. And one of, one of the things that characterizes your music is how many different styles your music embraces. Mm. It does, doesn't it? Because, you know, you're listening to your, one of your albums, suddenly there's brass, and then you listen to another, and there's blues, or there's some folk music, and that's always been your guide, hasn't I'm, it? I'm glad Just you see that be... as a strength, because some people yeah. see that as a weakness and a curse, you know. So to, yeah, because they can't box you. Maybe, mm. yeah. Mm. I, uh, but it, I mean, I, I started off as a, uh, I wouldn't have tried to play music if it wasn't for punk, because punk was a bit like skiffle. It was like, hey, Ed, you can all have a go where before punk. I mean, I still, I mean, I was a big fan of King Crimson and all, but they were like gods. They were like the gods. They, uh, but when punk came along, I thought, well, if Sid Vicious can do it, I'm having a go at that. <laughs> and that, that was the only reason I had a go to do it, you know, and, and then when punk only really lasted about a year and then we had the new wave and the, the students got a hold of punk and just sophisticated, went XTC, it went mm. everywhere. Phenomenal mushroom. XTC, what a band. So as punks, yeah. where, you know, you couldn't be in a punk band unless you were rubbish mm. for, for a year. <laughs> or you're too good, get rid of him, you know. Yeah. So I, I was rubbish, so I got into punk bands. <laughs> but after 1977, you had to learn to play. So what I did was, I never knew I was going to be a songwriter. Uh, I bought the Teach Yourself Jazz book, Teach Yourself uh, Acoustic, uh, Teach Yourself uh, Blues, Country, and I became a jack of all, master of none, because I'd, I'd get to exercise 10 and think, I'm, go I'm done, I kind of I get past this, so I put the kettle on. <laughs> and it was the journey to the kettle where I'd get a song. <laughs> so I would be a, a beginner at Spanish guitar, and I'd get exercise 10, and I'd get Rain, a song like Rain or The Old Church. And uh, So I was a jack of all, Master of none, but for a, a toolkit for a songwriter, it's useless because you don't have to be a master of, of anything. Yeah. It was the hardest thing for me was getting rid of the imposter syndrome. You know. The imposter syndrome. Impo yeah, where you feel like you're not a proper one. Because I was a table tennis player and a carpet fitter before this shit hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and I still think like that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to go, oot, no, oot. <laughs> table tennis. Table tennis. I love table tennis. Do you know the band Bears Den? I've heard of them, I've seen They're them. Do you know the band Bears, Dan? They're lovely, really, really beautiful band. Uh, they're part of the sort of Mumford and Sons oh, family. Right. And uh, they, they, when, when they tour, they take a table tennis table oh, with them. That would be and awesome. they and the roadies and the whole crew have this table tennis tournament uh -huh. throughout the tour. 
Awesome. It's a good idea, isn't it's it? It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Because touring is not the most healthy uh, thing to do. If <laughs> Is it? it, oh, it uh, you know, you, you have to make a decision to say, right, I'm going to... When we get to the next town, I'm going to go out and explore a little bit. Uh, I'm not just going to sit in the hotel or sit in the dressing room because, you know, and eat takeaway food and drink loads of beer. At the end of a tour like that, you're going to put on two stone. I can imagine some 18-year-old going, but that's heaven. Yes. <laughs> we thought it was heaven. But yeah. <laughs> but as you, as you uh, get more experienced, you realise that actually it's a really good idea because I'm, I've been touring this year uh, with, with the songs the Beatles gave away with my great friend Colin Hall, who's a phenomenal Beatles expert. And one of the big things for me about the tour has made it so enjoyable is sightseeing, basically, going to places I hadn't been to before. I hadn't realised I hadn't been to the Yorkshire Dales. What? How beautiful. <laughs> We're driving through the... I mean, the, it was just absolutely... For north, north Northumberland coast. You've just started a fight there when you mentioned yes. the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> Do you think the other dogs are Lancastrian? <laughs> Could be, yeah. <laughs> Amos Brealey. <laughs> yes.